Building a custom bike can be one of the most fulfilling and difficult things in cycling. So today I'm gonna to share with you the easiest, most straightforward way to get a custom bike built. I thought all the bikes would give me some credibility. The coolest bikes out there are the ones that are custom built. Like you start with a frame and you pick all the parts. But I can't stress enough how tremendously difficult this task can actually be. Oh, Jesus, come on. From compatibility, availability, actually assembling the bike, it's a major undertaking. But I've found an extremely simple solution to this very complex problem. And because this video is sponsored by Competitive Cyclists, we're gonna tap into one of their best kept secrets that's available to anyone. They're called gearheads and they know everything that you don't about the bike that you wanna build and the parts that you wanna put on it. It's like a concierge service for cyclists. And believe me when I say that this is a resource that I've found helpful several times over. And it just so happens that I wanna set up a DB9, a rambunctious hardtail from Ibis that's all party in the front. It's probably all party all the time. They recently brought it back after several years and I couldn't let it get away. I know that I wanna set this up with a working class athlete level build, but I got a lot of questions about compatibility and what parts are even available in my range. So starting with just the DB9 frame, we're gonna call a gearhead and see what kind of a build we can come up with. And we'll see how difficult or easy this process actually is. Thanks for calling Competitive Cyclists. This is Gearhead Jono. How can I help you today? I want to build up a custom Ibis DV9. Oh, that is a great bike. I'm glad that Ibis brought it back. For me, I like to start the drivetrain. Do you know what you want there? I am very curious about the new SRAM transmission. Just as, uh, seems maybe a little too Gucci for me. Well, you are in luck because they actually just released the GX version. So it's uh, more affordable than like the XO or XX. You get all the same performance gains just in a heavier package. And it's not even that much heavier. So it's a great for like the, the everyman rider. So you're actually in luck. The Ibis DB9 came back with a universal derailleur hanger. So it's a UDH and that allows you to run transmission drivetrain. So you're all set there. Whew. Not a, Yeah, not all frames are gonna be compatible. So you definitely wanna check that. Still wireless technology, still has the pod shifter. And if you want to go with a Axis reverb dropper post, um, then you got like only two cables on the bike, which is awesome. Oh my God. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Axis dropper. I just don't know if, if it's actually gonna fit that bike. Um, so this bike uses a 31.6 millimeter uh, diameter dropper post for someone your height and with that inseam i would say probably 170 millimeters would be a good option very cool thank you for figuring that out for me moving on from transmission i would look at forks this bike ibis recommends 100 millimeters through 140 millimeters so pretty flexible are you going to be more cross-country racer type or you want to do more like bigger trail adventures it's kind of something in the middle it's like sometimes light sometimes you know the trail gets a little rowdy Okay, perfect. So I'd, I'd probably recommend a 120 millimeter. Two really popular options are going to be the Sid Ultimate and then the Fox 34. I think the Sid is the way to go. I have one of those on another bike and I just know how it works. The Rock Shocks, you know, it's it's part of the, the SRAM family. So if you're looking to do a more on-brand type build, something to consider is, is leaning in towards that. I think that's the way to go. Oh, and for brakes, let's just do SRAM because it's it's consistent, it matches everything. I know how to bleed them. Yeah, we can do that. So I'm gonna recommend the level stealth. That'd be a great option for this build. I'm more used to drop bar. What is level in the hierarchy? A G2 or a, a code RSC, that's gonna be more bigger travel bikes, but level is gonna be a better fit for like a um, lighter off-road mountain bike. Awesome. I have no idea about mountain bike brakes. So thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Wheels. We'll move on to wheels. The theme of this build is like working class athlete. Not crazy over the top stuff, but not bottom of the barrel either. Like what kind of wheels do you have that are kind of right in that Goldilocks region? Yeah, I'd say the Envy All Mountain 30, AM30 wheel set. That's going to be like Envy's entry level uh, wheel set, but by any means, it's not entry level. <laughs> it's still some of the best components you can get. And we're actually based down the road from them. So they're up in Ogden, Utah. And we're down here in Salt Lake City. So they are, they're neighbors of ours. Wait, are there wheels built in the U.S.? 
Yeah, handmade oh. in Ogden, Utah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, and he uses Industry 9, 1-1 hubs. They're some of the best hubs out there, and these have great engagement, which are also made in the United States. I believe it's North Carolina. What? Yeah, so you wow. got a, a made in the USA wheel. And for, you know, not a crazy amount of money. Sold. I yeah. really want to ride these wheels now. <laughs> Since we're on the wheels, do you have a favorite tire that you like? Or do you need some recommendations there? Yeah, t- mountain bike tires, I don't have the best grasp on. Okay. What have you used in the past? I've used a lot of Pirellis and the Specialized Ground Control. Nice. I love the ground controls. Have you run the Maxxis Recon? No, but a lot of my buddies do. It's very similar to the ground control. It's fast rolling, but has a great amount of traction. They're very predictable. So I think you would have no issues running a 2.4 Recon front and rear. Okay, let's do that. Perfect. Yeah, for this saddle, I've been really curious about these 3D printed saddles. What do you think of like that physique style for like a cross country mountain bike? Yeah, I think they work great for a lot of a lot of bikes, different types of bikes. So you can do it on gravel bike, road bike, mountain bike. The Physique Vinto Argo R3 saddle uh, comes at a reasonable price point, and it is 3D printed, which is really cool. Um, I actually have one on my gravel bike oh. with the with the carbon rails, and that that thing is super comfortable. I'm just a little nervous about carbon rails on a bike that potentially can fall over often like it just yeah and when you're hitting bumps and things like there's a chance you know it could break so having the the metal rails is definitely a, a better option for a mountain bike okay that makes me feel a little better <laughs> um cool and handlebars and stem what uh, you got a preference there that i have no idea i don't know how wide i don't know what brand like potentially carbon fiber would be cool but yeah, I, I would recommend carbon. Um, it really takes away some of the, the trail chatter oh. and having a hard tail, you know, the, it's going to be a little chattery. So having a carbon bar is an awesome option on a hard tail mountain bike. I would go with the Envy, but with that, you have two different diameters. Main difference is there, the clamp diameter and the bar diameter where it, you know, meets the stem. So I'd say the industry is trending towards 35 millimeter bars. So if you're really undecided, I would, I would, lean towards that direction that way you kind of future proof yourself a bit that makes perfect sense i think that's the direction to go cool um and there's different rise options so there's three different options there i know more and more options let's stay in the middle we'll do the the 25 millimeter rise cool that way you don't feel like you're hunched over cross country racer a little more of a trail bar very cool since we're doing the nv bars i'm going to recommend going with the nv stem as well the alloy stem it's going to look really good with the bars and with the wheel set that you picked out um, so let's just keep it all in the family there. I love it. Do you know what length stem you typically go with? Should I just go look real fast? Yeah, yeah. go do it. Go do it. 50 to 52, something in there. Okay. We'll go with 50 millimeters. That's pretty common for most, okay. most bikes. I know that I like ergon grips. I like to try and stick with those. GA3 grips. I think are the ones you're talking about. Got it. Yes. Cool. We can add those to the order. Pedals. Shimano XT. You got it. What about bottle cages? Do you drink water when you're on the bike? Oh, <laughs> I guess I would say if I had to pick bottle cages, I would do side mount and only because they're, you just never know when you might need them. Oh. Personally, I, I, I think the Lazine Flow SL cages work great. Um, they're a side loader cage. They're a plastic like polymer. So it's, you know, not going to break the bank to purchase them. You can get a pair for like, you know, 25 ish dollars. Oh, that sounds perfect. Yeah, I see them right here. Those look awesome. This is some cool attention to detail on the build. They made sure that both the side mount cages opened on the same side. I'm impressed by that. How'd you guys know I was right-handed? Ooh, headset. Oh man. Yeah, that's a big one. You can't ride a bike without a headset. I didn't even think about that. Ooh. Most people don't. Most people <laughs> don't even realize it's there. <laughs> Uh, so if you don't really have a preference, um, I'd say Cane Creek. They make some of the best headsets around. Nothing crazy fancy, just their uh, their 40 series. It's super reliable. Uh, probably won't give you any trouble for years and years and years. That's what I would go with. Yeah, that sounds fine with me. Yeah, this is like a really nice bike, but not like crazy unattainium for people. It's, it's, you know, it's the GX build. It's the the base Envy wheels. It's, you know, nothing nothing too crazy. Is it the best bang for your buck? Because kind of that middle yeah. place is kind of like sort of that sweet spot. Because once you start yeah, I, going like too expensive, it's diminishing return on Oh, yeah, value. I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. 
So like the the apex there's, is there's a curve middle. and you are you are in it. You're in the perfect spot. This is the perfect bike for as far as components go and like where they're at in the world. Like this is perfect. This is the perfect bike for pretty much anyone. You hit the spot here. Yeah. So like it's not even necessary to go crazy to the end. If you have the budget, like might as well. <laughs> but <laughs> but you know, most people, you know, they don't want to spend twelve thousand dollars on a mountain bike. Uh so I think where you landed this spec i think it's going to be a really solid bike and i think you're gonna you're gonna love this thing i already do yeah i already love it for you <laughs> <laughs> all right so now that we have the list of parts where these are going to make their way to our bike shop uh right now looks like the build time is about three to four business days once it's built up you'll get an email letting you know the bike is on its way once you get the bike all you'll have to do just throw the wheels on everything drivetrain will be ready to go Brakes are dialed. You're just ready to rip. Whoa. <laughs> Props to the blank box. You can't tell that's a bike. Why advertise it if it's sitting on your step? Wheels separated from frame. I think this looks pretty straightforward. I've seen a lot of bikes boxed up in my time, and this is honestly one of the most professional bike boxings I've ever seen. The fact that they zip tie this entire bike to a sheet of cardboard just plays to my point that this is one of the most well-packed bikes I've ever experienced. This is an insane detail. They have pre-greased the inside of the stem with carbon paste for the bars. This was built by Logan and secondary QC checked by JP. And my wheels were built by Gordon. Thanks, G. All right, MV AM30s laced to Industry 9 hubs. Let me know how you rate this racket test on a scale of one to nine. Oh, let's see how much it weighs. Shout out to this bike stand. Topeak Prep Stand Pro. It's got a scale built right into it. 26 pounds, 22 ounces. I'm okay with that. All right, first things next. Let's see how this thing does in the wild. I'm so excited. The purple on this is so understated. It reads black until it hits the sun. I like that you can see the carbon in there too. It's a transparent finish. I'm a fan of the Ibis identity upgrade. I think it looks cool. Modern, bold, solid. This is gonna be so much fun. Very playful. While feeling very grounded at the same time. That's a nice, that's a nice combo. Oh, it's confident, but it's not overbearing. Woo. And shout out Competitive Cyclist for sponsoring this week's video. Use offer code DUSTIN15 for 15% off your first order to competitivecyclist.com. What are you looking for, a whole new build? They got you covered. But yeah, it kind of goes where you let it. Takeaways on the GX. It looks amazing. The shifting is solid and instantaneous. Plus, with the fact that there is no derailleur hanger, means you don't have to change any of your bad habits. Just keep riding it as hard as you can. Whoa. This thing is so much fun. Holy crap. Oh, rim shock. <laughs> Do it, Audi. I sure do love Envy's branding. And also, I appreciate this logo placement of the AM30 on the rim. It's very well done. Honestly, I truly think what Competitive is doing with their gearheads is pretty fascinating. I know it's not for everyone, but for those that it works for, it works really well. Hopefully, this is something that will work for you. So much fun. This was the easiest, most painless custom bike build I have ever experienced.
And I think I'm gonna do an extended POV of this big descent we got coming up. So if you wanna see that with some lowbrow commentary, I'm gonna give it to the channel members because they deserve it. And I don't know if you do. If you'd like to become one, check out this thing right there. Hopefully there's a thing. And if that's not your thing, this will be. Pack your bags, I'll see you here in two seconds. Get your helmet. Oh, and grab some.